In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at quadratic word problems relating to motion of objects. So for our first problem here, what we have is a fireworks rocket is launched from a hill above a lake. The rocket will fall into the lake after exploding at a maximum height. The rocket's height from the lake is given by the following equation. Um, and in this case here, t is measured in seconds and h is measured in feet. So what's going on here is you'll notice here we have a quadratic. Obviously, the degree in this polynomial is 2. It's a quadratic. The leading coefficient is negative. And because the leading coefficient is negative, the quadratic is going to open downwards. And uh, not only is the quadratic going to open downwards, it's going to start at some height, right? Because if you notice in the question, uh, the question is indicating here that the rocket is launched from a hill. So the initial height of the rocket uh, cannot be zero. Uh, but we're going to examine that a little closer later. But this is the general, we're looking at motion of objects here. And uh, this is a quadratic that opens downwards. And we're kind of following the motion of this object as it hits the ground here. All right. T is measured in seconds and H is measured in feet. So if you look at our first question here, let's take a look here at part A. It says, uh, from what height is the rocket launched? So if I want to find the height that the rocket was launched at, I, essentially what we're looking for is I'm looking for this height right here, right? Um, right where the, the rocket was launched at here, I'm looking for this uh, little point in red. Well, um, on your x-axis, it is labeled with a t for time. If you remember here, this is t for time. So initially, time is zero. That's when the rocket has is about to be launched. So therefore, if I want to find the height of the rocket to the ground, the only thing that I have to do is I have to set my time equal to zero. And by doing that, you're finding the initial height of the rocket, right? Because this motion is measuring the, the height of the rocket to the ground at time t. Initially, that's where you're actually on top of the hill before it's actually launched. So if I let time be zero here, you're going to see here we end up getting, um, I end up getting here h equals negative 16 times 0 squared plus 64 times 0 plus 80. So h is 80. And the answer to this would be 80 feet would be our answer. OK. So you notice here the rocket is launched from a height of 80 feet um, to the lake. All right, let's take a look here at part B. So for part B here, they ask you, what time does a rocket hit max height? So now what I'm looking for here, now we've got our, our kind of rough sketch of our rocket here. And what I want to find this time is I want to find when, do, when does the rocket hit max height and what is the max height? Well, essentially, they're asking you for the vertex of your quadratic, right? They're looking for that h and k value, right? And in this case here, our variables would be our first coordinate here is going to be t. And our second coordinate here will be h for height. So that's what they're looking for here. When does this happen and what is the actual max height? Well, I have a quadratic here. Let's take a look here. My quadratic is h equals negative 16 t squared plus 64 t plus 80. If you notice here, I have a quadratic in standard form. If you have a quadratic in standard form and you want to go about finding the um, vertex here, you can just let t equal negative b over 2a. Um, and if you missed this proof here, or this uh, description here, I'll link something in the top right-hand corner if you want to check out how we discovered this was true. But anytime, again, just to remind you, if you do have a quadratic in standard form, the axis of symmetry or the x-coordinate of the vertex is always going to be negative b over 2a. So in this case here, my b value takes the place of 64, so this would be negative 64 over 2 times a is negative 16, in which case here we get negative 64 over negative 32, is going to be 2. So therefore, um, we already have part of the question answered. Well, when does the rocket hit max height? The rocket hits max height at 2 seconds. Right? So if I want to find out what the corresponding height is, I'm just going to sub that into my quadratic. So in this case here, the corresponding height at 2 seconds will give me what the max height is. So everywhere I see a t, I am changing that to a 2. And if you go ahead and calculate this, you get 144 feet. So the answer here is 144. So the rocket hits max height at 2 seconds 
uh, and that max height is 144 feet. Okay, so that's part B. Let's take a look at part C. At what time does the rocket hit the ground? So in this case here, we've now, what do we have? We have our rocket here. I know that this is time. I know this is when time is zero. I know that this is 80. We've just found out that this point here is the point two in 144. And I wanna go ahead and find out when does the rocket actually hit the ground. Uh, so there's several ways you can do this here. Let's take a look at our quadratic. Our quadratic here is h equals negative 16t plus 64t plus 80. And then in this case here, I want to know when does the uh, rocket hit the ground? Well, when the rocket hits the ground, its height is zero, right? If the rocket is hit the lake in this case, not the ground, I guess, when the rocket actually hits the lake, the height of it to the lake would be zero. So in this case here, you're just setting h equal to zero, and we're solving this quadratic here. Now there's several ways you can go about finding this here. Um, if you want, you can divide across by negative 16. If I divide across by negative 16, I get zero equals t squared minus four t minus five. And this factor is quite nicely. This will factor into t minus five, t plus one. Now I have the product of two expressions is zero. Either t minus five is zero or t plus one is zero. Either way, when solving for this, I get t is 5 or t is minus 1. So you have two answers here. Like I said, either t is 5 or t is minus 1. Now, t represents time, and you can't have negative time, so that is out. Um, what our answer actually is going to be here is 5 seconds. So in this case here, when does the rocket hit the lake? Or in this case here, we use the term ground. So that's going to be at 5 seconds. We're going to have the rocket is going to hit the lake or the ground. Just a note here, this negative one that we had found doesn't have significance for the problem, but it does have significance for the quadratic. If I extend this quadratic fully and allow for negative time, that would be the negative one here that we're interested in. Okay, but again, for the problem, there's no such thing as negative time. So this quadratic really doesn't exist to the left of this line here. All right, let's take a look at part D. Uh, for part D here, they ask you, how long is the rocket above 40 meters? Let's take a look at what we have here. We've got this rocket, kind of goes down like this, goes over here. I know that this is the height here. I know this is going to be 80 meters in height, right about there. And I want to know how long is the rocket above 40 meters? So maybe 40 meters might look something like this. Okay, and I'm going to label this as like y equals 40. This is like the 40 meter line. Okay, so we have our line y equals 40 here. This represents our sort of our breaking point, right? Along this line is the 40 meter mark. I'm interested in knowing for how long is the rocket above 40 meters. Well, initially when we start off, it is above 40 meters because it's actually 80 meters from the lake. And now all throughout this direction, it's getting larger and larger and larger. So again, its distance is above 40 meters. And as I go down, its distance is still above 40 meters from the lake, still above 40 meters from the lake. At 80 meters here, still above 40 meters, still about right until right here. So this entire distance from here to here, all this time that elapses, the rocket is above 40 meters. So that's what we want to figure out. So what I'm really interested in finding out is I want to find out what this point is. When does the rocket hit a height of 40 meters? So my quadratic is h equals negative 16t squared plus 64t plus 80. I'm going to go ahead and set that equal to 40. And I want to see at what time does it actually cross that 40 meter mark. So we're going to bring everything to one side, subtract 40 on both sides, end up getting 40. I'm going to go ahead and divide across by negative 16. It's not going to come out evenly, but this will become t squared minus 4t minus 2.5. And I'm going to go ahead and use the quadratic equation on this. So if we're going to use the quadratic equation on this, we're going to get t equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, the entire expression over 2a. In which case here, I get 
t equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 26 over 2. So you end up getting 2 times here. You get t equals 4 plus the root of 26 over 2 and t equals 4 minus the root of 26 over 2. So the two approximate answers are 4.55 seconds and negative 0 0.55 seconds. So again here, uh, negative time is inadmissible and the answer we're getting here is 4.55 seconds. So that means if we go back up to our graph here, this quadratic will hit that point is going to be 4.55 seconds and that 40 meters in height. So therefore, uh, the time that the ball is above 40 meters is going to be from a, the initial time of zero all the way up to 4.55. So the answer here is going to be 4.55 seconds. Okay, so uh, restudy this problem here. It does cover a lot of ground uh, that is commonly discussed here. Again, we have a motion of an object opening downwards, and then, um, you know, these are the base, sort of standard questions you always get with these motions of objects. You know, at what height did it start at? Um, what, when did it hit max height? What is the max height? Um, when does it hit the ground? And then, like, how long is it above a certain distance or below a certain distance? Okay, moving on to the next question here. So for the next question here, this time, again, uh, football is being kicked. This time in the air, its height uh, in meters is given by the following expression here. So notice here, um, still a quadratic, still opens downwards, but they gave it to us in vertex form here. All right, they give this to in vertex form. This has a lot of advantages to answering uh, some of the problems that are given. So for example, let's take a look at A. Um, so again, this object is, is modeling the motion of a ball to the ground. So you're measuring the distance that the ball is to the ground at time t. So for part A here, it says, what time does the ball hit max height and what is the max height? Well, again, they're asking for the vertex. Anytime you hear that question, what is max height? When is max height? They're essentially just asking for the vertex of your quadratic. Um, the benefit here is it's already in vertex form, if you notice. So the vertex of this quadratic is going to be 2.4 and 29. So therefore, when does the ball hit max height? The ball is going to hit max height at 2.4 seconds. And not only do you know that, I already know the max height of this ball is 29. So you can see uh, when you are in vertex form, how quickly it is to find that max height and to find when that max height happens at. All right, moving on here. Part B asks you what height was the ball kicked from. So same idea as we had in the previous question. I want to know what height the ball was kicked from. The height was ball was kicked from would be right here, and that happens when time is zero. So you set time equal to zero in this quadratic. So in this case here, you get h equals negative 4.9, 0 minus 2.4, quantity squared, plus 29. 0 0.776 meters. So in this case here, uh, the ball was hit from a height of 0 0.776 meters. Okay, I wanted to just kind of wrap it up uh, showing you guys how motion of object works when you're in vertex form. Again, it can be a little bit easier uh, than you do have when you're taking a look at um, your standard form here. So review these two problems here. It covers a decent chunk of motion of objects. Give them a re-review. Watch the video again if, if you need to. Uh, and even try these out yourself and see how you do. And that concludes our lesson on quadratic word problems with motion of objects. Thank you.